Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, let's take a look at every Premier League club and find what player has killed their career stone dead this season. Stamped on it, beaten it within an inch of its life, essentially destroyed what they once had. Right, let's take a look. Okay, 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 maybe not destroyed their career. That might be a bit, a bit, a bit too harsh of a word. But let's look at the players who've harmed their career this season, whether it be through poor decisions or just terrible, terrible performances on the pitch. Arsenal, Kieran Tierney. Well, the easiest one to point the finger at is Granit Xhaka and say that, yeah, he, he completely destroyed his career in that game against Crystal Palace for Christmas. By answering back to the fans, he was essentially chucking his captain's armband out the window. The Switzerland captain was almost sold to Hertha Berlin in Germany, swapping the glamour of North London for annual Bundesliga relegation battles alongside Dedrick Boyata, captained by an almost decrepit looking Solomon Kalou. There would be no bigger humiliation than that. Thankfully, that didn't happen. He stayed and earned back a bit of trust with the fans. Although Russia Dortmund fans probably haven't stopped laughing at Pierre Emerick Aubameyang getting knocked out of Europe's second rate competition by a bunch of Greeks. You stupid. <laughs> So how about Kieran Tierney instead? A year ago, Tierney was edging towards Celtic legendary status. A homegrown footballer graduating from the Utes to play over 180 games, winning four league titles, five domestic cups, and earning a smattering of individual awards, all by the age of 21. Since moving to Arsenal for 25 million pounds, he's been decimated by injuries, reduced to just three league starts, none by November, publicly befriended Whiskey Mertens who beat the elderly, and to make matters worse, his rival for the left-back Scott with Scotland is coasting 25 points clear at the top of the league. Last summer, Scott Brown was tipping this man to sign for either Barcelona or PSG. And now he's stuffed in the treatment room for a club halfway down the league. And second-choice left-back for a country who shipped three at Kazakhstan. Christ, his career really is stuck down the toilet. Aston Villa, Danny Drinkwater. Oh wow, you don't get much more specialist in disaster than this. This was supposed to be the year Danny Drinkwater revived his career. Got some first-team football away from Chelsea to put himself back on Gareth Southgate's radar ahead of the Euros. At least uh, that was the plan. Plan. He went on loan to Burnley in August, played once and was just reportedly beaten up outside a nightclub. Then he rocks up Aston Villa in January. Plays four times before being told to leave the club's training ground for apparently trying to headbutt Jota, his own goddamn teammate. It's almost as if this guy has just been on a one-man mission to destroy his Premier League career. Bournemouth Ryan Fraser. Okay, destroying his career is a bit harsh, but if we're talking about the potential for big money moves, then yeah, that won't be happening for Ryan Fraser anytime soon. He's admitted himself after a stunning season for Bournemouth last year. Yeah. He did exactly what you shouldn't do and let transfer talk affect him. Because of those links to Arsenal, he was distracted, causing a steep decline in his performances this season. He now has just one goal all season for Bournemouth, who are stuffed in the relegation zone. He's also been pretty useless at international level too. Sorry, Fraser, but any glimmer of you once playing Champions League football or even Europa League football is now dead in the water forever. Brighton Florian Andone. Well, this is pretty simple. Despite stinking up the place last season, Romanian striker Florian Andone was given a fair crack of the whip by new boss Graham Potter in the summer at the start of the season. He started and scored in an open day 3 0 win at Watford, with Glenn Murray clearly past it. This was Andone's chance to nail down a first team spot at Brighton in the Premier League. And then, uh, two weeks later, he gets sent off for a minus headbutt and a 2 0 home defeat to Southampton. He was then chucked out alone to Turkey before the end of the week. Burnley Joe Hart. Joe Hart once said he would do everything in his power to get back in the England setup and would never give up. On on Euro 2020. Yeah, this is the very definition of giving up. In what world did he think slumming on the benches of Burnley for another season would get him put in the squad? Even a move to the MLS, anything is better than playing back up to Nick Pope for one more year. Especially with Jordan Pickford messing up each and every week. If Hart had a bit of fire left in his belly, a morsel of self-belief, he'd be out there getting first-team football and trying to prove Southgate wrong. Even Jack Bullen now has a better chance of getting picked for the squad. And he's perched above the trapdoor to League One, Chelsea Kepa. Okay, listen, Kepa hasn't destroyed his career by any means, but... It's definitely been harmed. Listen, a few months ago, Kepa was the undisputed first choice goalie for Spain ahead of the Euros. With David Hayes' errors in recent months, yeah, he could have nailed down that spot for sure, reducing the best goalkeeper of the world to just playing second fiddle. But now, Kepa's been shaken this season too, and even lost his Chelsea place a few weeks ago. Crystal Palace, Mamadou Sakho. Remember when Mamadou Sakho was once the captain of PSG at 17 years of age? He was destined for greatness. Look at him now. A combination of injuries and poor form, this 20 million pound centre back has been reduced to just four starts for Crystal Palace. Again, this is a man with 29 caps for France. He's clearly highly rated within the French setup, and yet at the age of 30, he's watching his career seep through the cracks of Sutter's Park with his former teammates on the brink of the title. Everton, Jordan Pickford. Yeah, Jordan Pickford's having a bad season. I don't care what anyone says. To an extent, well, I think he should be dropped for England. Yeah, he's good with his feet, but he often makes a bunch of mistakes, often lets his concentration drop, clearly gets easily distracted. If and when 
he loses his England number one spot to Dean Henderson, he's probably going to look back on this season and wish he had done a lot better. Leicester and Napoli's Mendy. Lads, it's really tough to find a Leicester player who's destroyed their career this season. They're third in the league. Even Kalichi Iheanacho is doing well. Maybe Napoli's Mendy is a former club record signing, was once seen as the next Claude Makélélé, the heir to N'Golo Kante, and is now just clearly seen as yesterday's news. He's been left out of 31 matchday squads this season. He started just twice. Why on earth did he not leave in January for the sake of his career? Doesn't he have a morsel of ambition? Liverpool Adrian. Ah. I feel like this one is a bit harsh. Listen lads, for a backup goalie, Adrian has played way more than he probably thought he would. He's already got 18 games under his belt by mid-March. He was the penalty king hero against Chelsea in the Super Cup. But um, football fans have short memories and now he's been chucked under a bus. Since his high profile mistakes in the Champions League exit against Atletico Madrid, the public reaction smacks of the same one Loris Karius got after his very public career death. Like Karius, all that goodwill Adrian built up, that is now gone. Extinguished. Forever. All anyone is going to ever remember Adrian for now is fluffing his lines in the Champions League last 16, costing Liverpool a chance of reclaiming their European crown. Man City, Scott Carson. Easy, very easy, Scott Carson. Why would you do this? You're a seasoned veteran of the game. You were still number one for a championship team on the verge of promotion. Why chuck that in the bin to go sit in the stands at Man City for a year? Why denigrate yourself like this? Goalkeepers are the least required position in football. You think it's going to be easy for Carson to find a better gig than Derby County when he puts himself back in the shop window after his gap year slumming on the benches of Manchester? No, most teams will already have a settled number one, including Derby. Just watch, Carson, despite being a very decent shot stopper, you're just going to be forced to settle for a lowly gig in League One. Man United, Tahith Chong. One question, Tide Chung. Why did you sign a new contract at Manchester United? Because despite the hype and youth awards, he's now 20 years of age. He's not even a teenager anymore. And yet, isn't being given a look-in for a struggling club. 20 minutes against Leicester, 4 against Newcastle, 10 at home to Watford. And uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I almost forgot. Over an hour of game time in a defeat against a bunch of plumbers from Kazakhstan. The kid is stuffed in the other 23s. Clearly not rated by the staff. Why commit your future to the club when you have half of Italy chasing your signature? Willing to actually give you a game. I mean, look at Paul Pogba. His move to Juventus worked out for him. Chong is, is just going to sit in the reserves collecting dust. Newcastle Rob Elliott. How Rob Elliott just given up on football? He must have. He's 33 years old and hasn't been given a game in over two years. He's currently third choice at Newcastle and just, just sort of accepts it. Sort of accepts that he's never going to play football again. It's a shame because if this man had a shred of ambition, he could realistically be keeping goal in the top half of the championship, providing actual competition for Darren Randolph's number one Ireland jersey. On his day, I actually think Elliott is the better shot stopper of the two. But now he's um, he's currently playing backup to a backup in Newcastle. Christ above. Not Arch Max Ahrens. Is this harsh? It feels harsh. Listen, lads, I don't want to just pick on 20-year-old kids, but don't think Max Ahrens' stock is, is ever going to be higher than it was last summer. He was the EFL Young Player of the Year, was getting linked with Manchester United, and now he's he's formed part of a leaky backline that's destined to get relegated. I feel like he's ruined his England hopes, and that big money move to a European giant is probably gone forever. If he's back playing Championship football next season, he's really going to feel like banging his head off a fridge. Sheffield United, Leon Clark. Why is Leon Clark still at Sheffield United? Seriously, does, does someone want to explain that one to me? He's 35 years of age, being given just one league game this season. Did he just want to taste a slice of Premier League football before he dies? Because otherwise, I can't really understand why he would stay. The clock is ticking down until his retirement. He's only got about two years left. Go out and play! Southampton Angus Gunn. It's incredible to think Angus Gunn would have started this season with a goal to force his way into England's 2020 squad. Um, time for a rethink, lads. Sure, it started well playing the first 10 games of the season. And then uh, you can see his 9 in 1 game. Watching his career crumble into dust with every goal that flew past him. Tottenham Ryan Sessignon. I bet Ryan Sessignon regrets this move to Spurs. Remember the hype that used to surround this teenager at Fulham? He was arguably England's hottest prospect. Linked with big money moves to Barcelona, Real Madrid, Man City. Never mind Euro 2020. This lad was nearly chucked into England's 2018 World Cup squad. And then he chooses to go and sit on the bench of Spurs for a year. Starting just four times and going for the most coveted teenager in the country to just some forgotten mid-table misfit. Watford, Danny Welbeck. Okay, let's be honest. Danny Welbeck's career was already ruined before he turned up at Watford. But again, this was supposed to be the springboard to get this man back in the England squad. Um, no, he started just three games. West Ham, Roberto. We all know Roberto has killed his career stone dead. Once a highly rated Champions League, yes, Champions League goalkeeper. Now he's a walking joke. Given a few games at West Ham, chucked the ball into his own net, lost his place to a 34-year-old journeyman, and was then punted out alone to Al Ave. Not a good luck. Wolves John Ruddy. John Ruddy used to be a guy getting linked with Chelsea. He was just a broken finger away from going to Euro 2012. At just 33 years of age, he probably have hoped to be in the reckoning for a chance at Euro 2020. After all, he's got more senior caps than Henderson. But no, he's chosen to remain rooted to the bench at Wolves.
Anyway, that's the end of it, guys. Let me know what you think. Am I being too harsh? Have these players, in fact, not ruined their careers? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.